untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at an Abs Uncolored Tokens deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring two copies of Kaya Geist Hunter, the 3 mana Planeswalker from Crimson Vow, starts out at 3 loyalty, and the plus 1 says creatures we control gain Death Touch until end of turn, and we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature token we control. Then the minus 2 is what we're excited about, saying until end of turn if one or more tokens would be created under our control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. And then the minus 6 ultimate, which is quite achievable, says exile all cards from all graveyards, and then create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying for each card exiled this way, which is usually enough to end the game on the following turn. Then taking a look at some other cards here from Crimson Vow, we've got three copies of a wedding announcement, an enchantment saying at the beginning of your end step, put an invitation counter on the wedding announcement, and if you attacked with two or more creatures this turn, we get to draw a card, otherwise we create a 1-1 white human creature token. Then if wedding announcement has three or more invitation counters on it, it transforms into wedding festivity, an enchantment giving creatures we control plus one plus one. So most of the time when playing wedding announcement, we're going to end up making three tokens over the course of three turns, and then we'll end up with a nice anthem effect pumping up our team. Then taking a look at some other cards here, we also have a one-off copy of Edgar, Charmed Groom, 4 mana, 4-4 four, four legendary vampire noble giving other vampires we control plus 1 plus 1, and then when Edgar dies it returns to the battlefield transformed as Edgar Markov's Coffin, a legendary artifact that at the beginning of our upkeep creates a 1-1 white and black vampire creature token with lifelink, we put a bloodline counter on the coffin, and then if there are 3 or more bloodline counters on it, we remove them and transform it back into Edgar, which will not suffer from summoning sickness so can attack right away, and then of course giving other vampires plus one plus one will synergize nicely with the one one tokens we generated. And then we've got some uh, oldies but goodies with a singleton copy of Battle for Bretagard. The three mana saga on the first chapter creates a 1 1 white human warrior creature token. Keep in mind the human warrior is different from the human tokens from Wedding Announcement, which is going to be relevant in just a second. Then on chapter 2 we create a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token. And on the final chapter we choose any number of artifact tokens and or creature tokens we control with different names. And for each of them we create a token that's a copy of it, so that's why it's important to distinguish between the human warriors and the regular humans, and then being able to copy artifact tokens also means we can copy treasure tokens, which your deck can generate in a multitude of ways, between a shambling ghast when it dies creates a treasure token, or we can give a creature minus one minus one, as well as our three copies of deadly dispute and instant that as an additional cost to cast requires us to sacrifice an artifact or creature and then we get to draw two cards and create a treasure token so of course the curve of turn one shambling gas or eye twitch into a turn two deadly dispute can set up some very powerful plays on the following turn and then I twitch a 1-1 flyer that when it dies allows us to learn, alongside our two copies of Hunt for Specimens, a 2-mana sorcery creating a 1-1 black and green pest creature token that when it dies gains one life, and also allows us to learn, which is where the seven sideboard lessons come in handy in best of one, including environmental sciences to find a basic land and gain two life, we've got necrotic fumes as removal requiring us to exile one of our creatures, Containment Breach can deal with artifacts and enchantments. Inkling Summoning makes a 2-1 Flying Inkling token. Pest Summoning makes two 1-1 one -one Black and Green Pest creature tokens. Then Mascot Exhibition makes a whole variety of creature tokens as well at 7 mana. And then Confront a Past can take out opposing Planeswalkers or potentially bring back a Planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield. So those are some nice additional token makers that we can combine with Kaya. So that's where the lessons also come in handy. And then rounding out the deck here, at one mana we've got some more cheap removal with Blood Chief's Thirst to take out creatures with mana value 2 or less, can also be kicked for larger creatures and planeswalkers. Two copies of a Vanishing Verse to exile target monocolored permanent and instant speed, so shines against the various monocolored aggro decks, but can also take out something like the Hullbreaker Horror before it can do too much damage, so quite valuable. Could also potentially play some copies of a Rite of Oblivion, which is a repeatable removal spell, although it does require us to sacrifice one of our non-land permanents, but that's also a card you could potentially sneak into the deck. 
And then we've got a full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper, a 1-1 one -one that when it enters the battlefield creates a treasure token, which as we know synergizes quite nicely with a few of our cards. And then whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control we also gain one life, which also plays nicely with all our various creature tokens. And then, somewhat surprisingly, also playing two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre as a sweeper, just an important card to have against the aggressive decks, which can often overpower our smaller creature tokens. So this is a nice way to reset the board, and then leave an enchantment in place, saying whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life, which is going to be quite valuable against control decks. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we also gain one life. And then we cannot have a token deck without a Seacast Chariot, the main reason to splash green in the deck. The 4-4 Legendary Artifact Vehicle has a crew cost of 4, and when it enters the battlefield it is joined by a pair of 2-2 green cat creature tokens. And when the Chariot attacks, we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So it can copy our various creature tokens as well as treasure tokens if we need additional mana. Then we also have a singleton copy of Sternheim Unleashed, can be foretold for 2 mana and put in exile, to then later cast it for double X and white, creating a 4-4 white angel warrior creature token with flying and vigilance if we cast it for 4 mana, but if it was cast with the foretold cost, we create X of those tokens instead. So we can potentially exile a turn 2, make 1 token turn 3, or we can wait until turn 5 to make 2 tokens, or maybe in the late game can make several tokens at once, which we can then hopefully copy with Kaya, or maybe a Seacost Chariot or Battle for Bretagard. And then topping off our curve, we've got 3 copies of Spider Queen. Starts out at 4 loyalty, says whenever a creature we control dies, put a loyalty counter on Spider Queen. The 0 ability lets us draw a card at the cost of 1 life, which we can offset easily with our innkeeper. Then the minus 3 generates a pair of 2-1 black spider creature tokens with menace and reach. And then I don't think I've ever used the minus 8 ultimate, but could also be a fun win condition. So both Spider Queen and Chariot are great cards to pair alongside Kaya, and sometimes we'll be able to curve Kaya into a Seacast Chariot and make 4 cat tokens, which is great. Other times we'll play Kaya, maybe use the plus on an existing creature token, and then we'll have to wait for the right circumstances to use the minus 2 ability to make a whole bunch of creature tokens at once. And that's also part of the reason why we only have one battle for Bretagard, because we don't get the chance to use Kaya's minus 2 ability before getting any tokens from our saga, whereas at least Wedding Announcement triggers end of turn, so we get a chance to double up on those human tokens. But this is definitely a deck you can experiment with a lot. At 4 mana I've tried out Sorin to make some 2-3 flying lifelinking vampire tokens, at 5 mana you've got Ren and 7 to make some large tree folk tokens, and the more varied number of tokens we have, of course a better card like Battle for Bretagard becomes, so it's kinda tricky to strike the right balance. Then taking a look at our mana base, our deck is mainly black, so we need more black mana early, which is why we have two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as our creature line of choice, as well as two basic swamps, and then we've got one basic plains, one basic forest to go with our environmental sciences and posing copies of Field of Ruin as well, and then all 12 pathways in the Abs and Colors as well as two of each of the new dual lands with Shattered Sanctum, Death Camp Glade, and two copies of Overgrown Farmland. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, our hand seems keepable. Could use some more top end threats, but Hunt can always deliver and Spider Queen's excellent. So up against a blue reds control deck of sorts. Not sure which variety, but probably involves taking extra turns somehow. And then we'll try to curve Kaya into Spider Queen. Don't really mind disruption there. And then what to get with Hunt for Specimens is the next question. If I draw lands, I will need to get environmental sciences and I can maybe go for something else. Could go for Confront a Past, given that I have two Planeswalkers in hand. That seems reasonable. And then I still have the option of playing Kaya first. But it's not going to be incredibly impactful right away. So I'm kind of liking Hunt and get Confront the Past, and then I could play Shambling Gast, or I could play a Tapped Hive. I'll play Shambling Gasts for a little bit of extra pressure here. 
And then next turn we can go tap land plus Kaya, even though that doesn't play around another disruption. I think we'll be fine. Another iteration, opponent failing to hit their land drops last turn. And now Kaya can come down and grow the pest token right away. They could have a bounce spell here for the pests. That's fine. Hey, time to crash a vampire wedding. And I brought a pointy gift. <laughs> Fading hope. And yeah, hopefully next turn we get to resolve Spider Queen. If our opponent keeps up a bunch of mana, it's pretty risky to use Kaya's minus two and then play Spider Queen if they counter it. So I guess we'll just play Spider Queen, see if it resolves, and then we can always minus two and then minus three. Even though that technically gives them the opportunity to, like, use a burn spell to reduce the Spider Queen's loyalty, so we can maybe no longer use a minus three. Alright, so our opponent keeps up four mana. Step one, play Spider Queen. Alright, so now that they cast a sweeper, at least Spider Queen picks up a bunch of loyalty. As her opponent goes for Windfall, setting up their extra turns with Epiphany. I will get what I want. And if they kill Spider Queen, we can maybe still get her back with Confront the Past. The spiders can technically block the bird tokens from Alrin's Epiphany which your opponent could already cast, but more likely that they want to set up multiple extra turns. Alright, gold span, I'm happy to block. So if I block with two spiders, pretty good chance that our opponent has an interactive spell to deal with one of the spiders. If I block with three spiders, they can just let damage happen. But that's probably still fine. Didn't think I want to block with all four, that seems a bit excessive. I would like to keep my pressure in play before they can set up all their extra turns. But at the same time, if the opponent can make infinite mana with gold span, we're also going to lose. So this seems like a good middle ground. Ah, opponent's just going to kill the spider queen so we don't get any loyalty. And then Goldspan's gonna die, most likely. Leaving us with a Spider, a Shambling Gas, a Kaya. And we can't even confront the past back Spider Queen, because it got exiled, so... That was a pretty clean answer. Now I could also just animate Hive of the Eye Tyrants, exile their Galvanic Iteration. Could be fine. Or we could hunt for specimens and... Find another way of generating tokens, which we could maybe even double with Kaya. Opponent's still thinking about this Goldspan Dragon. So they might have the interaction to save it, but it's maybe going to cost them a lot of resources to do so. Alright, opponent's going to Galvanic Iteration. Two mana left. And a Fading Hope to bounce two spiders. All right, that keeps the gold span alive. The plan of Hive exiling the iteration also looks less impressive now. So I'm gonna have to hunt for specimens for removal for gold span, most likely. And then Kaya probably can keep plussing as opposed to minus here. Get a Necrotic Fumes. And then... I might want to attack first. I can teach you a thing or two. 
probably better to play a land in case of another disruption. Exile Goldspan, and we'll sacrifice probably the pests. Alright, that worked. Serapon and Dos have four cards in hand. Quite a bit of mana to work with, but at least the gold span is dealt with. Our hand's not looking great at the moment, since we had to use Hunt for Specimens as removal instead of finding more threats. Our opponent passes with a bunch of mana up, could be Divide by Zero or Unexpected Windfall. Probably fine to play Wedding Announcements, and then plus on the Spider. Opponent goes for iteration. Is this a windfall, maybe? Prismari commands, okay. It's gonna deal two damage and then draw to discard two. That's fine. So now I'm liking Hive over wedding announcements to exile that iteration. And we'll pass it back. Hopefully no follow-up gold span, although we can meet hook massacre for four. Yeah, there it is. So Kaya down. I fare better on my own anyway. Could also thirst it, although that would give them a treasure in the process. The upside of thirst is that I can also play wedding announcement, which adds a little bit more pressure. Although if we get the meat hook massacre in play. We can punish future removal spells from the opponent as well. So close call, but Goldspan has to go. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll go for Meatook Massacre. And pass it back. And then I can maybe bring back Kaya next turn and play the announcements. Right, there's Epiphany number one. Not the most high impact Epiphany. Ooh, a Leer. Good target for Blood Chief's Thirsts. And then a wedding announcement seems fine. Okay, so do I want to attack with Hive, or do I want to bring back Kaya with Confront the Past? Wouldn't be a super high impact Kaya. Can put a counter on the token, and then take some pressure off my life total as the birds start attacking Kaya. Kind of like Hive getting in there for now, and then I'll draw a card with the announcement instead of making an extra token, which seems slightly better here. And then what's the most high impact card I want to exile in case of future Leer? Could be the Unexpected Windfall or Divide by Zero. Could go for the cheaper Fading Hope, which could bounce their own Leer to protect it. I guess that's also reasonable. Although they'll have to exile this second Fading Hope as well. Opponent has a Fading Hope. Surprised they didn't bounce before we got a chance to attack. But I didn't play my land, so I could replay Hive in case that happened. And pick up a Vanishing Verse. Could be an answer to Leer, or maybe a Holebreaker Horror, if her opponent's playing that. Okay, 
Ooh, Alchemist Gambit to take an extra turn. Fair enough. Luckily only two birds in play to worry about. And burn down the house to make three devils. Okay. That increases the pressure dramatically. Opponents at 10. Do have a confront the past. So can I confront the past, get back Kaya, use the minus two, deadly dispute the token, make two treasures. Maybe that's a fine sequence here. And then I'll attack first. Spider Queen's gonna be nice. And then... I could Blood Chief's Thirst a bird token here. Still hang on to Vanishing Verse. And then end of turn we'll get to tokens, which are now getting the plus one plus one bonus as well. So Kaya's most likely gonna die, but she did a decent job here of making an extra human and treasure token. I guess if they only send one devil at Kaya, I could take the three from the other tokens and then Vanishing Verse, the one going at Kaya, but it doesn't quite seem worth it here. So I can block the Devil, and then they have to decide if they want to take out my token or Kaya. And then... I can basically trade a 2-2 token for a Devil, which still seems acceptable. A lot of damage happened. Still have the option of using Deadly Dispute here. Could also wait until we get Spider Queen going. And can't forget about the Meat Hook Massacre. So, huh. They might have uh, mistakenly targeted the same token twice. Doesn't look like they're going after Kaya. So a slight misclick there, but another Alrun's Epiphany explains why they were ignoring Kaya. Alright, I mean, we're still in decent shape, although Goldspan is scary. Do have a Vanishing Verse to deal with that. Boon finally deals with Kaya. And I'm fine with the trade. This job's proving hard to crack. Seeker's chariot also great. So Goldspan has to go. And then I imagine going for Spider Queen's fine. To protect my life total the best possible. And I think I want to exile Goldspan now so they can't use this for two mana. So her opponent's gone through two copies of Alrun's Epiphany, one Alchemist Gambit. Get to draw here. Go, my children. And then could animate Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Still have to be a little bit careful in case they're sandbagging another Epiphany. 
but this will force a block if they don't have interaction. And then there's also the Metog Massacre to rely on. And then there's still two Fading Hopes in their graveyard. So not sure if it matters too much here. But sure, I'll get a Fading Hope. Bone goes for the trade. But they're still taking seven here. Uh, they had another Fading Hope in hand, so we'll sack the spider here. My will cannot be denied. And then it seems relatively safe to play Chariot now instead of Eye Twitch, but it looks like Meat Hook Massacre is gonna bring it home. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is... Okay. We'll have to make a decision here if we want to play a one drop on curve or turn to hunt for specimens, which is probably more important to get environmental sciences and get a second swamp. So I'll play the farmland. Turn one Lunark Veteran, so a life gain deck. Those can be pretty scary with the new Voice of the Blessed. But still getting sciences. Cleric's fine. Then we'll get an eye twitch in play. Turn three, you could see Righteous Valkyrie. Yep. So that's a scary card. Opponent already at 24, so at 27 life. 13 will get plus two, plus two. If they attack, I'll happily jump with eye twitch to get my Necrotic Fumes to exile the Valkyrie. If not, we'll probably get the wedding announcement going. Opponent passes. Could also do something with Innkeeper here. But step one, probably attack with Eye Twitch. Also lowers their life total if they take it. All right, and then what to do next? Kaya's got a pretty good chance of dying if I play her. So maybe we should get started on the wedding announcement first. Mark of Purifier, all right. That gets them to 27. And I guess we'll take 10. Really need some mana. Gotta leave Eye Twitch back to Chumblock Valkyrie. Or I can attack them to get them below the threshold, but they're very likely to get back to 27 again. So. Could attack to draw a card with announcements, or we can try and make another token. Tough choice. Feels like. I'll have to keep Eye Twitch back. So then I'll try and develop my mana with Innkeeper and Shambling Ghast. And then we can jump with Eye Twitch, get Necrotic Fumes. Opponent's not holding back. So if I can kill the Purifier, I should probably go for it. 
And then next turn we can deal with the Valkyrie. So... If I block like so... Ghast can finish off the Purifier, although we have to be a little careful, because it could always not deal damage to the Shambling Ghast. So this is the only way that I can guarantee kill Purifier and learn with Eye Twitch. Yeah, I guess that's the way to go. Again, Necrotic Fumes. And then... Probably find thanks all the Valkyrie. And then there's still a Cleric of Life's Bond, which is pretty scary. Do I want to play a Shambling Ghast? I'm gonna get another 2 2 token essentially. Shambling Ghast would also be a 2 2. So we could maybe double block the Cleric if they manage to gain life. Even though I'm further away from Spider Queen, we've got another wedding announcement we can play. and sends in the troops. Just the veteran. So if I block the veterans, they can bring back both, which triggers the Cleric of Life's Bonds. Probably still fine. Still stuck on three lands, but probably time for uh, another wedding announcement here. Hive of the Eye Tyrant can attack, but we've got a reasonable double block available. Now if I block Shambling Gas and Cleric of Life's Bonds, it's gonna get a counter before I can finish it off with Shambling Gas because of the double Luminous Phantom. So maybe I should double block Cleric of Life's Bonds this turn, just soak up a damage there, and then take five, and then next turn we can double block Hive. Hmm, now that I think about it more, I think I actually would've been able to take out the Cleric had I blocked with Shambling Gas because the trigger from Shambling Ghast and the triggers from the Luminous Phantom would go on the stack in the order of active player, non-active player, which means that the non-active player's trigger, meaning Shambling Ghast, would resolve first, so we would give the Cleric minus one, minus one before it picks up those plus one, plus one counters, so I think we would have been fine to trade off there. Can play Shambling Ghast. And another announcement, and then next turn, hope to draw land for Spider Queen. Or I could play Kaya, which will make two tokens end of turn if I minus two. But I kind of want to keep Kaya to go with Spider Queen, which we're not going to be able to set up if we minus two now. So, tough call. I think it's just another wedding announcement. Could also consider attacking to draw, but... I'm gonna need the board presence, so I can't afford to attack and not make a token on the way back. But maybe next turn we can draw, although that might be too late. Skyclave Hierophant. Does Innkeeper keep me alive? It does with the wedding announcement making more tokens end of turn. So I could go Innkeeper, and then Kaya minuses to make even more tokens end of turn. Can go the other way around to make an extra treasure, because then we don't have the mana. Like 
I brought back her. Alright, so we've got a team of three threes now. Still a long way to go with her opponent at 45. I don't deserve this. Alright, there's a land. So play Spider Queen. And now we can start getting more aggressive. You require my aid. <laughs> How desperate. My power is for annihilation. And everyone but innkeeper and maybe one shambling gas to keep them for the hive. Also have to be mindful if her opponent draws another Righteous Valkyrie and gives a team plus two plus two, what happens. But we're attacking for a lot of damage, so we might be able to drop them below 27. And then if the Skycliff Hierophant dies, they could get back Purifier, that's fine. Yeah, this is probably okay. And then we'll draw with the last wedding announcements before giving the team an additional plus one plus one bonus. So their opponent's gonna trade while they can. I will. All right, not bad. So her opponent's still at 29, but luckily we dodged another Righteous Valkyrie, and her opponent explodes. Oof, what a close game here against Black White Life Gain. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and looks like we've got a keepable hand. Facing an interesting decision on turn one already. Do we want to play our one drop on curve? Do we want to foretell Starnheim Unleashed on turn 2, in which case I might want to play a tap land on turn 1 instead. I think we'll be fine playing a 1-drop here and then wait a little bit on foretelling opponent on blue-red, so another Epiphany deck most likely as we see Smoldering Egg. Good target for Blood Chief's Thirst. Probably don't have to kill it right away. And then I can foretell Starnheim Unleashed And we'll play this on white, I guess. They might suspect a Doomscar. Meat Hook Massacre is the draw. So, don't have a ton of action going on here. Just waiting until we can set up our Starnheim Unleashed. And then, probably find two double Shambling Gas, then wait on killing the Smoldering Egg. With most counter spells in the blue-red decks being divide by zero, I'm not too worried about Blood Chief's Thirst getting countered in later turns. All right, hunt for specimens. Could get something interesting. And then I can still thirst the egg with two counters on it. And what's the interesting thing we want to get? It's always a safe bet to get environmental sciences. Inkling summoning doesn't seem incredibly impactful. Sure. And then do I want a Blood Chief's Thirst now or cast environmental sciences to maybe go for Sternheim for two next turn? Probably want to wait a little bit more on Sternheim until we can play around counter spells as well to have the opponent be tapped out. 
I think it's okay to kill the egg now, also plays around jewelry disruption. I guess they could have the counter instant or sorcery. It's just a burning hands on eye twitch. That's okay. And then now learn for... Could go big with mascots, but we're pretty far from casting it. Necrotic fumes could maybe deal with the second egg. So that's also reasonable. And we'll hit for one. So next turn we can maybe sciences plus necrotic fumes. Goldspan, I guess, will be the target of necrotic fumes now. Hoping they don't have interaction. So let me necrotic fumes first, on the off chance that they have a jewelry disruption. And then take it from there. Might want to attack first as well. Could also see divide by zero, which would be bad news. But then we'll just set up our massacre next turn. Deluge close to transforming smoldering egg, so can expect that next turn. So our play pattern might be meat hook massacre to wipe the board, which also kills shambling gas to then set up a big Sternheim unleashed. Have or Hive of the Eye Tyrant to maybe exile Memory Deluge as well. So interesting game. Best case scenario is they play another creature that dies to Meat Hook Massacre. Because I don't know how I feel about animating Hive if they've got a bunch of mana up. Alright, another Burning Hands on Shambling Gas to transform their egg. And Ashmouth triggers off a second deluge. So this looks more like is that control instead of necessarily Epiphany, but they of course could still have an Epiphany in there. Vanishing Verse, clean answer to the Ashmouth Dragon as well. Or I could keep it as a potential answer to like a Hullbreaker Horror that they might play in the future. Now if I go Vanishing Verse, I can also animate Hive, exile one of the Deluges, but that still leaves the second. Playing the Massacre first makes Starnheim Unleashed more effective later, because we don't need to worry about wiping our own Angels. So I think I like Attack for 1, and then Massacre for 4. And that still leaves up Vanishing Verse at instant speed. Okay, and then hopefully we can resolve a Starnheim Unleashed and there's no Sweeper, but opponent's got a lot of cards in hand, so not too confident about that one. They're gonna tap out for Deluge. So, could still exile the seconds before we play Starnheim. Is that the play? Feels a little bit safer, but it's hard to tell. Not sure if the opponent's playing many sweepers, or if this is a good window to resolve my 4-4 four, four angels. And then if they flash back Deluge, they would just be dead on board. So how much can I cast this for? X equals 1, 2, 3. Yeah, I mean, making 3 angels isn't bad. All right, let's go for it. And then I might also want to play Shambling Gas to present lethal, even though the Meat Hook Massacre could also help with the last point. So even if they have something like Hullbreaker Horror into a one mana spell, it's not the end of the world. They could, of course, start comboing with Alrun's Epiphany, but yeah, it looks like our opponent can beat our 4-4 Angels, and that gets the job done. 
All right, so another very close game here against is it Control, is it Dragons? It's kind of hard to tell at this point as all these blue-red decks are starting to blend together. But overall, quite happy with where this Amazon Tokens deck ended up as we've reached the end of the season. So in our next video, we'll be starting back from Platinum. But yeah, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a deck with a lot of different card choices and a lot of flexibility. We could be playing more Planeswalkers like Sorin at 4 mana or Renan 7 at 5. And we could play various removal spells like maybe Rite of Oblivion could be a fun one or two off that plays well with some of our tokens we can sacrifice, even plays with our treasure tokens. So definitely a lot of different options and it was difficult to narrow it down, played a few one-offs just to hope to see them on camera, which we did in the final game with the Starham Unleashed, so I'm happy that I included that one. But uh, yeah, the battle for Brentagard, probably just worse than Wedding Announcement, so could easily go up to four copies there. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it up to you to experiment with additional cards, but this seems like a good foundation, pretty similar to the various snow control decks, but kind of trades in some of the sacrifice creatures and sweepers for additional pressure in the form of a Zika's Chariot, which helps in the Izzet control matchups, where you need to be able to apply some pressure early to close out the game before they can take over with their powerful late game. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.